much, Jason Drew. You are, in fact, correct. We teleport ourselves to Studio 1X for a Corwin Ford Coors Light uh, Double X session today. Joined by the boys of Holy White Hounds. How goes it, gentlemen? It's going great, man. How you doing? Well. Living goes. the dream, right? Yep. At least in some way, shape, or form, somebody's nightmare kind of situation. Drinking lots of Coors. Yeah, that, you guys are yeah. very excited about the Coors Light aspect of we today. Like Coors Light. It's, it's, it's cold like the mountains. See, there you go. And we didn't even Same have to pay you guys. It. And we got you guys some food, so now you're all fueled up and good to go. Sure. Ready for some fun no, questions. Ready to drink some Coors, man. Ready to drink some Coors. <laughs> Perfect. So for those who don't know, I saw the license plate outside from Iowa. That's right. Idaho, Iowa, two completely different places. We can now confirm that, correct? Yeah. And there's also Ohio. Right. Which is like That's right another one that it. sounds like our names. It's just weird, We right? should just get our states together someday and just battle it <laughs> just out. have like a party, actually. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, a party. After the battle. Why did you go battle it <laughs> out yeah, right away? <laughs> I, for yeah, supremacy, man. I know it escalated fast. I know, but <laughs> very quickly. So, for those not in the know, what is the origin story of Holy White Hounds? Like, give us the you know the thirty second rundown of how it all came to be. Uh, Brent and I met each other twelve years ago. Been in various bands and stuff like that, and then uh, we started Hounds like four years ago. This lineup got together about three and a half years ago, okay. and. Best friends since then. Best you friends know, forever. Conquering the world. <laughs> We're the three best four friends. That anyone yeah. could ever has. Yeah. Uh, and that brings me kind of to the next, the next part of this is, what is the best part about touring? We always hear, oh, it sucks to be in a van for, you know, X amount of time. What, it's road trip, man. It's bro trip, as they say. What is the best part of being on the road, especially with four dudes that you, you know, kind of get along with? Recently, I would say uh, watching cartoons at the hotel. See, there you go. Like the, because we've been out for a while now. So if you were to <laughs> ask me that, like on the, like in the first two weeks, I'd say playing the shows, right. of course. Right. But now it's like when we get back and we watch Rick and Morty, and we're just like yeah. joking around. Love a love a dub dub. Yeah, and yeah. the experimentation that happens. And on the that, road uh, that, that's the way the news goes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, is there any must visit places so far? You said you've been out for a while. Is there anyone that we, as you said, have to battle it out with tonight here at the Knitting Factory? <laughs> Uh, like 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 cool cities. Yeah, you places mean? that just blew you away. You're like, oh, we showed up to this hole in the wall bar in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, there's a thousand people and the place is on fire. I don't know. Well, as far as like attendance for shows, uh, I've really liked uh, Tucson okay. and Albuquerque. Those are two cool places, and Orlando's been really cool to us too. Cool. And uh, had a lot of fun in Nashville. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's. Uh, I was just joking around with this po- dude doing a podcast the other day uh, wh- who asked that question, and then I kind of went down a list that I realized was a little bit too long Good. and just unnecessary. I just wanted to say we're coming for you, Orlando, you know, and, 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 oh, yeah. and you know, there we that go. kind of stuff. You and we're going to have a stuff. party. We're not going to fight you guys. Oh, yeah, right. We're, we're partying, party. fighting. I'm sorry. I, yeah. get, I get my terms mixed up. <laughs> you guys brought some instruments. You want to blow us away with the song real quick? Yeah, please. Uh, this song is our first single off of our album, Sparkle Sparkle. It's called Switchblade. You guys ready? Yeah. James, you ready? I'm ready. Oh, cool. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> Sitting in the backseat, sucking on a switchblade. Uh, whisper in my ear, but I can't hear what you say. Mama should have loved you, but I know she's an animal. And even if she loves you, she's riding with her hands full. And sometimes all you need is just the taste. And you did what you could to hide your deed. Just the taste Yeah Walked into the bathroom Sucking on a switchblade Your lips are made of rainbows You're never gonna behave Came into my basement Looked to me a wasted said it was my last chance to take you to the wasteland And sometimes all you need is just the taste And you did what you could to hide your teeth And in the end it could not be erased And you just the taste 
me that you love me. I love you. Tell me that you love me. You're sitting in the backseat, sucking on a switchblade. <laughs> Thank you. Switchblade, it's a Studio One X Corwin Ford Coors Light X session. Thank you guys so much. Uh, you probably don't know that. That song actually picked up a few rounds on my cage match. I put two songs head to head, and I actually do battle it out. You guys picked up, I think, a three win streak. So. Such a oh, competitive wow. it, it, place. No, yeah. it's not so much that. It's just, you know. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. It's cool. Uh, so I wanted to congratulate you on we that. We were just as well. betting on fights on the drive yeah. here just oh, for right? fun. Were we were like, this who, the most uh, ridiculous. I was trying to one? sleep, by the way. Oh, were you? I was oh, trying to listen to It was to Michael Jordan versus Wayne Gretzky. Who do you think would win? Well, uh, Wayne Gretzky in your hands down. Yeah, the dude fights the size other dudes difference. on ice. Yeah, he's got like a he, foot he on get, him, though. He get dunked on, but he's going to take off his skate and stab somebody. Oh, like, this, oh, this is what we no saw. Until we saw no Shaq combat. fight Oscar De La Hoya. Because we were like 100% Oscar De La Hoya, and Shaq had a chance. Well, I mean, we're going to have to just make this a new show bit. So if you guys can just keep calling in and weekly, and we can put stuff together, that'd be... We'll put it together yeah, we'll later. Do it. It'd be a new cage match. Forget the bands. We'll just put, you know characters together and see what happens. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, speaking of being creative and weird, what is the process for you guys? Is it a jam band, hey, that sounded good, let's elaborate, or do you break off into your own little rooms and not see each other for the next week? How, how does this all unfold for you guys as far as the creative process is concerned? Interestingly enough, I think this is the first band that any of us have ever been in where we do enjoy breaking off. Okay. Everything I've ever done has been such a like collaboration from the beginning. And with these guys, I get the feeling because we're still we're we're right now writing together and right. figuring out how we do it really. And uh, I really like breaking off with just like one of these guys, and we've talked about it, and I know that they do too. Just mm -hmm. so if it's just me and Ambrose, or just me and or just James, right. and you know, so. Uh, and then we we get these skeletons together, and then we come to the band like with the skeleton. Right. Two guys usually will come to the band with a skeleton, and then everybody else like puts the meat on it, you know. Right on. Man. And that's so it's still a collaboration, but uh, the initial idea we're so noisy and loud and obnoxious that if you get us in a room together and be like, be productive, <laughs> no, it's not gonna it's happen. Not gonna happen. <laughs> Just no. not gonna be. Uh, and that kind of leads me to the next deal: is what is the most important part for you guys when kind of bringing this all together? Are you looking at the lyrical side of things are you like oh we just want to like reach out to every person who's listening to this and like tweak an emotion or two what is the goal where do you aim whenever you're getting together i think everybody's got kind of a different answer for that we'll take i it. got a soft spot for the emotional side of things okay. but uh okay no it's all over the board uh we like cool songs just songs that sound cool and are different and it can be put as simply as that too i think brent writes good lyrics so yeah so much of the writing it uh, I feel like I've never actually sat down and wrote a lyric in my life. <laughs> it's just like when, when when I'm playing, I just like sing the first thing that I think of. And sometimes it's good, and sometimes I have to scrap it and sing the second thing I think of. <laughs> right. But uh, it's... Um, they, I just feel like a lot of the songs, especially the ones I end up liking the most, they just kind of come to you, okay. and you just kind of feel like almost more like you discovered the song. That like sounds Destiny. so cheesy. Like Destiny just like shows up. Well, it's like up. the song was laying there, and you like found it under a rock or something. Nice. Like when he came to the band with Switchblade, he was just in the basement, and I'm like, dude, please tell me you wrote that. That's <laughs> so cool. He's like, I didn't write it. I was just playing it now. I'm like, well, that's writing it, man. And so I was like, I got the perfect <laughs> lyrics for that. Yeah. So just like, yeah, when he said just cool songs, we just want to write songs that we think are cool. Right. You know, I, I, sometimes I think like a catchy song could be catchy one day and annoying the next day. Definitely. But a cool song is always cool. I like you know? that. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's kind of catchy too. Maybe a bad <laughs> right, example, but it works, but yes. man. It's, it's lasted this long. Uh, yeah. And then for your final, why did he ask that question? Holy White Hounds, uh, not just a badass D and D thing, but uh, the name of your band. Why is that? A D and D thing. Dungeons and Dragons. The Holy White Hound. Like, oh really? Like Nick came in no, and was like, like, "Hey, you want Holy White Hounds?" I was like, "Do I have to roll for it?" And he's like, "No, the band." I was like, "No, oh, like it sounds right. like a monster." Oh, Sorry, okay. I made a I giant nerd reference. No, I thought it was an existing you. thing, and I was like, "That is amazing." Yeah, no. We're gonna get sued. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but where did, the, where did the name come from? Uh, we uh, we were just kind of looking at like awesome band names, and we wanted something that was kind of just out there and provocative, so we were a holy white squid for about two weeks. Nice. And then uh, we changed it to hounds for, 
I don't remember so why. So you could read the initials in the mirror? Yeah. Ah, there you yeah. go. That's all we cared about. That's all you wanted? You yeah. just pretty vain. Fog up the mirror, H, Acronyms, W, yeah. H, walk yeah. away yeah. winner. Well, I just, I was going through the, like, the classifieds <laughs> or whatever. Mm-hmm. At, um, when we were starting the Holy White Hounds, it had been a while since I'd paid attention to my local music scene. <laughs> and so I was just wanting to go out to shows and just kind of see what other my friends were doing and right. stuff. And, uh... The, I was just reading the most ridiculous band names that I loved. Right. I, I mean, I do think they're ridiculous, but I love them. There was a band called Person Whale. <laughs> and I was just like, that is the best. And so I told Ambrose, I was like, dude, I don't want to think of the band name this time. You think up the band name, but I want it to be terrible. <laughs> and he said, okay. And he came to the band with a holy white squid. And I was like, that is perfect. Damn. And then everywhere we went, people were like, no, you're not. I'm not booking Holy White Squid. But and if then, you change uh, to a hound, we got you. Holy White yeah. Hound. And then it, that, that well, it was fine. It's that we, D&D, man, I'm yeah, telling you. Yeah. Everybody gets it. Well, why don't you give us I'm one still more kind song? of upset about it. Are you? No. Are you really that bad? No, 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 no. Uh, you'll always be a squid in my heart. How about that? I, yeah, exactly. I thought the Holy White Squid is so funny. It's so cool. <laughs> you got one more for us? As far yeah, as songs. yeah, yeah. Um, this song is brought to you by that dry mountain air right on my throat. This song is called Black Lust. It's off the album. Thank you guys very much. Two, three, four. Black Lust. you it makes me sick girl that I can't have you it lies are lonely but I don't care cuz I'm so hollow she wants to have my baby yeah and she
my God. Thank you so much for coming on in, stopping on by, playing tonight at the Knitting Factory with Pretty Reckless. Looking so, forward to it, man. So we'll see you out there here in, like, what, four hours, five hours kind of deal? True. <laughs> Where, are we in the Tetons? I don't, are we in the Tetons? I don't think so. No. 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 I don't know geography, man. I'm, in the what? Boise Foot. Foot. Boise Foothills, apparently. Boise Foothills. So that's the official place. But a that's big awesome. thank you to Corey Ford, Coors Light, yeah. Taco Time, and once again, Holy White Hounds, thank you guys so much for joining thank us. Thank you very much, man. We will kick it back to you, Jason Drew.